Persona has had his fair share of tough bosses. Elizabeth in Persona 3, Philemon in Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, Margaret in Persona 4, but none of them are above this new Persona 5 Royal boss fight, which is a mod that replaces the Persona 4 protagonist boss fight with a full 4 enemies consisting of the Persona 4 protagonist, the Persona 3 protagonist, and I guess, and even the Persona 5 protagonist. This mod was made by Meowcat and you can find the link to it in the description below. I was originally going to do this without teammates but I felt kinda bad considering I pretty much lied in my Narukami video when I said I would do it in the video after, and I didn't. So to remedy that, I'm going to take on all four of these super bosses on Merciless without DLC. So that means no DLC personas, no DLC equipments, and yeah that's pretty much it. That's all that can really benefit me here. With that said, let me explain the setup going into this fight. First. I needed to take as little damage as possible. You'll see why later. So I modified a few personas using skill cards to ensure I'd be as safe as possible, while being able to buff and attack at the same time. I first started with Odin, whom I gave Concentrate and Charge to double my next attacks. I also gave it Fortify Spirit because while testing this boss, I kept getting hit by status ailments which would lead to Joker getting nuked, so I had to leave gun damage open. Sure hope that doesn't come back to bite me. Next was Fafnir, who was a new addition to P5R. He repels both physical and gun damage, while draining fire and nuke which are built into his base. I gave him nullifications to every other type of damage, and gave him heat riser and regenerate 3 to heal. Third was Shikiyaji, who nullifies fizz, gun, bless, and curse attacks passively, and I made him repel every other type of attack and drain fire. His main purpose is to remove enemy buffs and use lightning if necessary. Keep in mind, I'm counting almighty attacks when I refer to types of attack because nullifying almighty is impossible. All my other personas are somewhat vulnerable to damage, including Yoshitsune, who is vulnerable to gun damage but nothing else. He also has a good setup to make Kasutobi do tons of damage. I have Satanayo as the main damage doer and he has 5 stacks of attack so expect to see tons of damage from him. I'm also using Lilium to put enemies to sleep since Raul is a DLC persona and I said I wasn't going to use it. Addis is only being used to buff the entire party stats, and Maria is the healer. For my teammates, I'll be using Sumire for critical attacks as a kind of bailout if I need to get the turn back to Joker to save the run, Akechi for his damage and curse attacks, and Makoto for debuffing and healing. For equipment, I'm using LeBlanc's charm for Joker for reasons that I'll explain later. Makoto will have the Ring of Vanity for protection against her weakness against Psychokinesis. Akechi will have the Angel Badge so he's more likely to dodge anything that isn't almighty. And finally, Sumeri will have the Ring of Lust as a heal, since she will always be the last one to attack before the enemy's turn. With that set up, we're all ready to take on the boss that will definitely take more time than it should. I also have my good luck charm with the persona of former President Barack Obama to buff all my stats with the auto buff abilities at the start of battle. With that, we're set to Merciless, and let the battle begin. Will you be able to overcome this foe? Right off the bat, this fight looks really intimidating since it's an actual 4v4 if you're running a team against this boss. Luckily for me, I don't need to buff myself because of the Alilot's auto skills. I take this time to use Concentrate or Charge for Joker, and debuff for Makoto. Akechi doesn't need to do anything yet, and I'll use Sumeri to buff my critical rate. It's tough to figure out a pattern for this boss. From my attempts, I get starts out with Maraku Kaja, Yu does Cross Slash, Joker uses Abyssal Wings, and Minato does Matarunda. In this fight, you'll find that they tend to bounce off each other's moves. For example, in this single turn, I guess hits me with Makajamon, which causes Forget, then Yu does Psycho Blast, which does technical damage to Joker and knocks him down. If not for debuffing you and buffing my party, this would have definitely killed me and ended the fight. That example wasn't even the worst of it, cause now I'll actually explain to you what these protagonists will destroy you with, and you tell me how hard this fight actually is. These protagonists can hit you with status ailments like brainwash, forget, and sleep because of this asshole, and they will capitalize off of it if they can land it. This will possibly end you before you get to do anything back to them. They'll debuff your attack, defense, and agility, and Joker has checkmate. Ha! I get the reference. Go fuck yourself. They buff their own attack, defense, and agility, but they also buff their critical rate. Combine this with Joker having one-shot kill, and get ready to die if this hits Joker. Oh, and I didn't even mention that they have charge and concentrate. 
be even more ready to die if you're not fully buffed and fully debuff them because they will definitely obliterate you. They will attack your weaknesses at some point as they cover every element of attack. This could lead to them buffing themselves again or going for an insta-kill attack. They can also put up counters like Tetracarn, Makarakarn, and the Life Wall, which does both. Also, if you end up taking too long in this fight, Joker also uses Neo Cadenza, which heals them and buffs all their stats. You're probably thinking, well, your Persona builds make sure that Joker can't die to more than half of their attacks. And you'd be right. But that's if all of my Personas were like that. Again, if I'm gonna use Satanile, I may have resistances to all elements, but I can still get hit by a crit, which ignores the resistance, so I still have to leave myself vulnerable if I want to do meaningful damage. You may have also noticed when I showed the clip of Joker using Phantom Shell on my party, my Joker was immune to it. Well, remember that LeBlanc charm that I had equipped? Yeah, that makes you immune to sleep, which was the lifesaver of this run. Thank you, Sojiro. That said, the preparation is what matters most to this boss. Any kind of vulnerabilities and weaknesses to Joker is a recipe for disaster. As you may know, if Joker dies, the fight is over no matter what. This boss is tough and really makes you use your brain, which is why I consider this to be such a great boss. And I haven't even discussed what you can do to them. Simply put, everything they do to you, you can do right back to them and then some. You can hit them with crits. They are vulnerable to status elements, so nuking them can be pretty easy if you have the right setup like mine. And they all have weaknesses for most of the fight. It's just a matter of if you can hit them, then use Baton Pass in a way that sets up big damage or buffs to protect yourself. That goes a long way with this fight in my opinion, because you can pretty much win with any party member out there. This makes the boss feel much more bearable, and honestly fun since you can actually use different elements to attack, and feel like you're actually doing something different than just getting carried by Joker with Myriad Truce. With that said, for most of my runs with this team and not using the DLC, I got through this fight in good shape thanks to my Persona builds. There were times where my teammates got wiped since I had to use their turns to attack and debuff, and I couldn't cover their weaknesses. Setting up the sleep to set an Isle nuke was much more satisfying off of Baton Pass. Seeing Morningstar do over 10k damage was amazing. I thought I'd blitz through them with this process, but when I was getting ready to hit what I thought would be the last big hit I needed, the worst possible thing happened. Good job, Violet! It's up to you! You may have thought before, you still ended up doing the basic Persona 5 strat and just nuking the opponent till they died. Sire, you lame piece of sh- Look man, they nuke me too. How is that not fair? These guys are the epitome of don't make a mistake against this boss or you'll die. Remember, they are also using DLC moves, so using Izanagi no Okami doesn't look so bad now. Especially when you consider that Joker, for whatever reason, also does Myriad Truce on top of Narukami already having it. I believe my strategy is perfectly justifiable, and I spent a few hours getting the personas and skill cards necessary to make this even possible. With that aside, even with the second life of theirs, I was still able to use the same strat the whole way. Just praying that Joker does not get hit by a critical attack and get one-shotted. I might have also forgot to mention that Futaba still had to save my ass using Final Guard in these runs. Eventually, I started taking them in bunches, but I tried to make sure I focused Joker and Narukami with technical damage if I could, since they are the main threats. Minato is just as scary, but at least most of his attacks don't hurt as much, nor does he heal the team. A few nukes later, and a shit ton of stubbornness by Aegis, I was able to beat this boss. Satanaya! My oh my! I may have made this boss look easier than it actually is, but again, I tested this boss a lot off recording. So I got a good idea of how to fight against it so my gameplay doesn't look terrible. Persona 5 Royals mechanics like Baton Pass and Skill Cards may make this boss a lot easier, but I think for how long this fight can go on, 
it definitely stands out in terms of difficulty at the very least. I know it's just a mod, but this is definitely the most fun boss fight I've fought so far. It doesn't require you to do certain attacks or change up your builds and strategies, like Lavenza for example. Regardless, if you still aren't satisfied, I'll do another video on this boss using only Solo Joker. And trust me, that is going to be the hardest challenge yet. Let me know by liking the video or commenting below. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.